Welcome to the Weekly Roar, coming live from the Lion's Den, helping new managers become great leaders and awesome bosses. And now, here's your host, Greg Storch. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Lion's Den. This is the Weekly Roar. Today, we're going to continue the recap of our next two leadership lessons. Now, during this leadership lessons mini series, I'm sharing the recap of two lessons learned each week from my last series, Lessons Learned in Leadership. Since that series started well over six months ago, I wanted to go back over those lessons in kind of a reader's digest fashion and bring back the highlights for you to keep those lessons fresh in your mind. So this week, we're rewinding the clock again and going back to January of this year and talking about lessons 15 and 16. Now, before we jump into that, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Greg Storch. I'm the owner of Lion Enterprise, host of the Weekly Roar, and the founder of a worldwide bartered coaching program called The Helping Hand. I'm a certified professional leadership coach and a certified leadership speaker and trainer. And as a friendly reminder, you can find all of these video resources on my website at lion-enterprise.com. Just go to the Lion's Pride Library and you can check them all out. Okay, let's start with the recap of Lesson 15. And I called that one, Sometimes the Worst Brings Out the Best. I really liked that lesson because it was timely with COVID in full swing and us facing a new year with more of the same. This lesson was about how leaders can really set themselves apart as great leaders by how they lead during those tough times. You know, I shared the story as a young leader in the Navy. I faced my own challenges in leadership because I was worried about how I was perceived. I wanted all the glory of the great decisions but I shied away from the tough ones that might make me unpopular. The issue with my approach of wanting all the good things associated with a leadership role and avoiding the hard leadership things was like wanting the perks, but not paying the price to lead. During the tough times in leadership, when we're called upon to make the tough decisions, that really distinguishes us in our leadership. To be distinguished in leadership means to be recognized by others as being different. Now, during that lesson, I said that it takes courage to be a leader. It's not the everyday decision-making. That's a good 95% of a leader's job, but what distinguishes leaders, that's that other 5%. That 5% makes up those tough calls you have to make. It's making those calls during change, during challenges, and really during crises that make you the leader you are. How a leader handles those things is what distinguishes their leadership as being great. Now, since those tough calls don't make up a majority of our day as leaders, luckily, I used that lesson to help others better understand when that time arrives. I shared three ways that a leader can know when they need to make a tough call. Now, the first thing was that anytime there was risk involved with their decision, whenever risk is involved, that's a sign for a leader that they're about to have to make a tough call. Leaders have to do things that others won't do. They put themselves on the line and good leaders are willing to take that risk. I challenged listeners that day that if they weren't willing to take a risk, then they shouldn't be in a leadership role because they'll never move forward if they're always playing it safe. So remember, progress always requires that we take risks and that's how leaders move themselves and their organizations and others forward. The tough calls will always demand 
that we take risks. The second thing that I talked about was that the looming decision creates an inner battle. Tough calls are called that for an obvious reason. They're tough. If they were clear and easy, they wouldn't be tough calls and anybody would be able to make them, right? What creates that battle with us is that we know whatever decision we make, it's going to get questioned or it'll be criticized and it will result in certain consequences. Doing the right thing isn't always easy, but it is always necessary if you're a leader who has integrity. Here's what I shared during this second one, and that was that we have to win our own internal battle before we can be ready to fight the one we'll face after making the tough call. I urged others that day to spend time making sure that they are absolutely convinced that the call they're going to make is the right one. Once they're convinced, they'll have the courage to stand by their decision, no matter how tough the call is or how difficult the aftermath becomes. And then that took me right into the third thing, which was making the tough call will distinguish us as a leader. Effective leaders make tough decisions during tough times. And at the end of the day, that's why leadership is needed. It's easy to navigate the easy path, but it requires a leader to move through the difficult times. Tough calls, tough times, and tough decisions are what distinguish our leadership. It's the actions we take during that 5% of the time. When the right person is the leader, they excel during those tough times. And that's why I said sometimes it takes the worst to bring out our best. It's easy to lead when things are going great. But when things are actually going in the wrong direction, that's when leaders really earn their keep. That's when they pay the price for leading others. The most effective leaders are the ones who make the tough decisions in tough times. And when they do, they distinguish themselves as leaders. So those were the three clues that a leader is about to make a tough call. So remember these. First, it involves risk. Leaders can't always play it safe and expect to make forward progress. Progress always requires some risk. Second, tough calls always create a battle within us. We must overcome the fear of criticism and being questioned and the possible consequences that are going to result from our decisions. And then third, making that tough call will distinguish you as a leader. Effective leaders make tough decisions during tough times. And at the end of the day, that's why leadership is needed. It's easy to navigate the easy path, but it requires a leader to move through the difficult times. So I hope that you remember these things that I mentioned back in lesson 15 to be better prepared for when the tough times come that you need to make that tough call. As I stated back then, working on developing a willingness to do the small things, the difficult things, and the unseen things is our preparation for major difficulties. So be on the lookout for the signs and opportunities to make tough decisions. If you've made them before, then you know what that looks and feels like. But if not, I want you to be ready for it. You'll get your chance. And when you do, when the time comes to make the tough call, to meet your greatest challenge, recognize it for the opportunity that it is. And that's the opportunity to distinguish yourself as a leader. Remember, when the going gets tough, the tough get leading. All right, now, that brings me to the recap of another one of my favorite lessons learned in leadership. And I called lesson 16, 
People don't quit jobs. They quit bad leaders. Have you ever left a place where you worked because you just couldn't stand working for the person who was supposed to be your leader? Well, if not, then someone close to you, someone you know right now has experienced this and it just goes to show you that people don't quit jobs, they quit poor leaders. So during that lesson, I shared a survey from 2016 that was conducted by Inc. Magazine and it identified the top 15 reasons why employees quit their jobs. And I shared it because more than half of those on that list were directly related to poor leadership. And these statistics I grabbed from a research project in 2019 and shared on that Wednesday proved the old cliche that people leave managers, not companies. Here's those stats again. 57% of employees have left a job because of their manager. 14% have left multiple jobs because of their managers and an additional 32% seriously considered leaving because of their manager. You see, companies don't do negative things to people. People do. And more times than not, the people responsible for alienating the employees are their direct supervisors. So what I shared during that weekly roar was the four things that I've seen over the years that make employees want to run the other way when they see that their boss is not who they thought they were. So here they are again, the four behaviors that make people quit other people. Now, that first one was not feeling valued. You know, if we don't value people, we can't add value to them. Just like if I don't respect someone, I can't treat them with respect. That's because we can't behave in a way that doesn't align with our beliefs. If I believe you hold no value, I will never value you. And when that happens in leadership, the boss begins to manipulate the people they manage. They get treated like objects rather than people. Now, with that said, I also shared a way to avoid falling into this trap, and that was by expressing appreciation for others. Praise them for their contributions because a kind word can go a really long way. This was simple. When leaders show their appreciation for their followers, their followers appreciate working for those leaders. Okay, now that second thing that makes people quit people was when they find that a leader can't be trusted. Trust in a leader is essential if others are going to follow that person. It's what effective leaders do. They build trust with their followers by being consistent in their behavior. A leader can lose trust with their followers when they don't act consistently and when they lie. Now, for this second one, I shared a few ways that leaders can build trust. Those things include having integrity, showing respect for others, focusing on the shared goals of the group and not their personal agendas, and aiming to always do the right thing. Remember, Building and maintaining trust as a leader has everything to do with integrity and communication. If someone wants to avoid losing followers, they should strive to be consistent, open, and truthful. And then that brought me to a third thing that tends to make people quit other people. It was something I have seen more times than I'd like to admit, and that is incompetence. Now, I've worked for some bosses who I believe to be the wrong person for the job, that they didn't have what it took to be successful at it. It's not great to be the follower of someone like that. We want our leaders to inspire us, but that's hard to do when they're viewed as being incompetent, right? The good news was that an incompetent leader doesn't lead for long. They have what we call a lid on their leadership. Remember, people naturally follow leaders who are stronger than themselves. So 
leaders who are viewed as incompetent or have a low lid will lose their followers to someone who has a higher lid than they do. And that's why we find people leave leaders who are incompetent. That brought me to the fourth and final thing that contributes to people quitting their leaders. And that was when their leader is insecure. Insecurities in a leader is an ingredient used in a recipe for disaster. And I reminded others that day that those other characteristics like valuing others and having integrity and showing competence aren't the only ingredients needed in this leadership recipe. You can have all three of those, but if you're an insecure leader, that will also drive people away. Their actions are typically driven out of things like fear, suspicion, distrust, and even jealousy. Now, I recalled a previous lesson about the responsibility for leaders to develop other leaders. The fancy term was succession planning. <laughs> but insecure leaders, they don't focus on that. They don't want to train you and help you move up. That insecurity comes from a scarcity mindset, and anyone who is successful will be seen as a threat to them and their existence. So remember, good leaders stoke the fire within their followers by helping them grow and excel. They aren't fire extinguishers. They lift their people up. They don't hold them down. So those were the four characteristics of poor leadership that cause people to leave them and their organizations. In a nutshell, people quit people who devalue them, who they don't trust, that aren't competent, and who are insecure in their leadership position. Keep this one thing in mind. People will leave. You won't save them all, and that's okay. But the point of this lesson was to shed light on being the type of leader that people want to follow. We can only control our actions, not the actions of others. We can't stop people from leaving, but we can become the leader that makes them want to stay and follow us. Remember, people don't quit jobs. They quit bad bosses. And by the way, before I wrap this up, I want to remind you that this is what my free giveaway on my website was all about. It's called The Secret Sauce of Awesome Bosses, and you can get your own copy on the homepage of my website. I'd love for you to check it out and let me know what you think. Okay, everybody, that does it for this week's recap. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. If you want to keep running to the roar, then join me next week as I continue these micro lessons and review and recap the 17th and 18th lessons learned in leadership. All you have to do is just come on back to the lion's den next Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern time. All right. Thanks for supporting me and watching today's weekly roar. I appreciate you. And until we meet again, remember, be powerful, but stay poised. Just like a lion. Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching the Weekly Roar live event at lionenterprise.com. If you enjoyed this video, please tell others to join us each week here in the Lion's Den. Thanks again, and see you next week.